Well, the race to be the next governor of Louisiana is tight, with seven candidates seeking the office. Of those, five are Republicans. Twyla's Avery Davidson introduced us to the lone independent and the lone Democratic candidate last week, and he now joins us to begin introducing those Republican candidates, beginning with someone who is no stranger to the governor's office. Kristen, we're almost at the halfway mark of going through all of the candidates who are running for Louisiana governor. Joining me now is Stephen Wagespach. He used to be the head of lobby and previously worked with uh, Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal. Stephen, thank you so much for joining Thanks. us. I appreciate you having me on. I'm excited about it. Well, tell me a little bit about your history and why you believe that makes you uh, fit for the governor's office. Yeah, absolutely. No, uh, glad to tell that story. Look, at the end of the day, I was born and raised here in Louisiana. I'm, I'm from Gonzales, Louisiana, Ascension Parish. And I've always been driven to make Louisiana a better state. And so throughout my career, both inside government and outside government in the private sector, I've been trying to find ways to solve problems in Louisiana. It's part of my brand, part of what drives me to this day. And I look at where we are as a state right now, and I think we're truly a state at a crossroads. I am tired of seeing families leave this state for other opportunities. I'm tired of seeing our economy shrink. I'm tired to see our population shrink, especially when the South is booming right now. And so I think this is the most consequential election in generations in Louisiana. And I think we need leadership that is not just conservative and then reflects the values of our people, but also knows how to get things done, solve problems. I'm tired of standard problems. I want to fix problems. And that's why I'm running, to kind of bring that to, uh, to, the, to the governorship. And we're excited with the feedback we're getting. We're only about 45, 50 days in, and it's been unbelievable response we're getting. And the reason why is I think there's a lot of people in the state who have the same feelings that we do, that this is a moment we can't blink. Louisiana has to take advantage of this. We have to join the other states in the South that are killing it. We have to stop going in reverse, start going in forward, and that means fixing our economy, fixing our school system, solving crime, and creating an environment where our families want to stay here as compared to leave. Now, while you weren't the governor, you did work in the governor's yeah. office for the eight years in which Bobby Jindal was governor. What did that experience teach you, and how yeah. does that set you up for what your next chapter may be? Well, I was there for the first term, and I left shortly okay. after the first term ended. And I'll tell you, you have to remember that time. That time was right after Katrina and Rita. This is 2007, 2008. And so at the time, there were so many things broken in the state. And there was such a question of can we rebuild the right way. And we came in and we doubled down the basics. We said we're going to grow jobs. We're going to redu reduce the tax burden. We're going to fight corruption with everything we get. We're going to stabilize and then try to excel. And that's what we focused on that first four years. And if you remember back then, we had an economy that was growing. We had jobs that were growing. We were number one on a lot of these lists on growing economies, entrepreneurship, innovative economies. It was exciting. We were that type of state that people were trying to copy at that point in time. You compare that to where we are today, and we're at the bottom of all those lists. And so that time, I learned a lot that Louisiana is capable of excellence, and that if you have everything aligned and everyone focused on the greater good as compared to personal good, then big things can happen. Because if you look at Louisiana, every time we have a storm, we have a tragedy. What do we all do? We put our politics aside, we put our arms down, and we lock arms together, and we say, let's go get this done for Louisiana. And we have these moments in our history where we do great historic responsive things. I think what we're trying to do now is, I want to turn it on cruise control so that we always have that approach to any problem we have. And we view our enemies as not as someone across the street who we may differ with, but states around us who are trying to steal our families and steal our jobs and steal our opportunity. Those are our enemies that we want to beat. And if we can create that culture here and not just have it post-storm, but just every single day, man, that's where I think Louisiana's on the path to excellence. And I learned in those four years that when, we're, when we have that as our goal, mm -hmm. we can accomplish great things with the right leadership in the state. Well, 10 years at lobby, obviously yeah. dealing with businesses. Agriculture is a business in Huge. every sense of the word. I mean, between farmers and ranchers having their own small businesses to the industry as a whole, where does that fit into your vision for Louisiana's future? How does agriculture play a part in that economic boom? Agriculture is one of the most important industries we have here for a number of reasons. First of all, not just for what it does by itself, but how it feeds other industries. Um, you look at our great culture, culture, recreation, tourism, restaurants, it depends on a strong you know, ag community here. If you look at our port system, we have over 30 ports throughout the state. Well, if you don't have the grain and the other products that are being offered here, then that port system doesn't do much good if we can't take advantage of it. But the big thing for me is what I hear from the farm community are kind of the basics that I hear from other businesses as well. They need a qualified workforce, people that are showed up, ready to work, 
they can get the job done. I think you fix our high schools, you insert career and technical training, you, you insert more ag training in those schools so we can develop that pipeline. That'd be a huge benefit for our ag community. That's a big priority for me to fix high schools to do that. The other piece is inflation and cost of insurance sometimes is burying these family farms, is burying the ag community, and we've got to get on top of that. And so I think whatever we can do to lower that tax burden, get bureaucracy and all of that governmental headache out of the way of the family farm so you can make it more affordable, especially while we have inflation like it is, that's another way to create that sustainability. So fix that workforce pipeline, lower the, the financial pressures and the governmental pressures on the family farm. That way we can try to get more lower cost uh, benefit in there to fight inflation. That's not just good for the ag community, that's good for every business. And so what I think is a lot of times we view different industries as having different needs. My years at Lobby taught me that there's really some common denominators. And it all starts with, in those high schools in my opinion, showing kids in Louisiana, there are great jobs to be had here. And they're very attainable jobs. You can have a great living, but you have to get the skills, the training, the know-how, and the work ethic to go and do that here. And I think in the ag community, they're perfect conduit for that type of workforce if we can do a better job providing it coming out of high schools. Well, you were the last to enter the governor's race, and you're one of five Republicans. What sets you apart from your fellow Republicans, and how are you going to find a way to get into that runoff? You know, I just hope the voters of this state recognize this year for what it truly is. It's the most important election cycle in generations. We can't miss this vote. If you look at the other states around us in the South, the South is on a boom right now. Coming out of COVID, Families, individuals, companies, they are leaving states like California, New York, and Illinois. They're tired of high taxes. They're tired of crazy politics. They're moving to the South. The South is dominating the top 10 on population growth and economic growth. Louisiana is going backwards right now in a boom time. That should be unexcusable. If people pay attention to the fact that this is our moment to shine, this is our moment to fix our economy and our workforce, I think they'll look for the type of leader who I think has a proven track record of being able to solve those problems. And I think that's what I can offer. I'm a conservative, but I'm also a consensus builder. And I think people are looking for someone who can drive solutions to the problems we have. They recognize that Louisiana is a pretty precarious spot. I think the other thing is I think people are sick and tired of politics. Politics has become more about who you, who you hate as compared to what you're trying to accomplish. And I'm gonna have a message that's based upon what we can do to fix Louisiana, stop the brain drain, begin the era of brain gain, that's going to be our message, and I think it's resonating with a, a type of people in the state who are sick of the games. They just want solutions to make their lives easier. Well, I know that you'll be looking for solutions to make it into that runoff. Stephen Wagaspak, the former head of Lobby, thank you so much for joining us here thank on you. This Week in Weeks in Agriculture. Appreciate it very much. Enjoyed best, it. Best of luck in the election And as go well. to wagsforla.com if you want to learn more. There you go. And of course, you can check out all of these interviews on our website at twilighttv.org. So right after this break, we're going to come back with another candidate for you to meet. Stay with us.